Okay, don't find it for me first though. Yeah, yeah, no way, we'll find somewhere to buy it. Hey, what's up, brother? You coming, man? Yeah, they said it might be easy. So first, I want you to define what you think the Trinity is. Well, obviously, the Trinity is different to depending on who you speak well, I'm to. I'm an Orthodox Christian, so what do you think we believe the Trinity is? Okay, so you would you say you hold on to the monarchal? Yes. Okay, so you would say that obviously... One being mm -hmm. is shared by three persons. persons. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So how else do you want me to expand on that? That's fine. I'm saying that's fine. Cool. So you believe they're both co-equal, yeah. co-eternal? Yeah, by nature. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No yeah. Uh, yeah, so yeah, I don't think the Bible teaches that. Show me, can you show me the passage where sure. the Bible teaches that? Sure. So it's not going to be one particular passage, but are you familiar with St. Gregory of Nyssa? Yeah, I know. Yeah, he wrote not three gods. Yeah, and have you read his work on the Holy Trinity? Uh, I've read uh, his uh, response to, was it Abad Ablabius? Ab Ad Ablabius. Yeah, but the thing is, I don't really want to talk... I mean, thing these is, church fathers are not my authority. They're mine. They're my yeah, blessed but, holy fathers who I adore and I, I, pray to. I understand that and I respect that. Obviously, that's your Yeah, but opinion. if you have scholars in your tradition, you talk about that. But what fine. I'm saying, my Bible is the final authority, so... That's a if, presupposition. Yeah, but what I'm saying is, let me explain something. You're not going to convince me by quoting your church fathers. The thing is, the thing is, right, I'm just, I'm just talking about what they wrote. You can take it or leave based on the information they present, not just who they are, okay? Yeah. So when St. Gregory talks about, do you know what the divine operations are? The divine operations? Yeah. Well, tell me what he said about the divine But listen, these things are irrelevant to me because you're not, you're not quoting scripture. So, okay, thing okay, is, this, okay. is, this, is, this is a problem, this is a problem, right? Yeah, we yeah. have different epistemologies. Of course. So you're presupposing your epistemology in this conversation. What yeah. would justify that? Well, I will believe the, the scriptures how do you final know what the scriptures are to begin with? Okay, so we can. We, we, I would say the early church were able. I would say as. Where's the earliest canon? Now you're just you're going all over the place, brother. You're, 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 you're asking me one question, then you're asking me another one. Because so, it's relevant to the question. If you're okay, saying so the early church. Was, okay, so let, let me explain something. Let me explain something. I believe even so, we've got uh, what, twenty-seven books of the New Testament. Correct. Okay. Now, for example, if there was a manuscript that was found in, say, Corinth. Yep. Today, yep. and we can historically verify because you know, one of Paul's letters, there, there's a letter I from agree. Paul, first, that, first script, the, the actual first script, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah. there's a letter that we do not have, okay. Right. So, if we could historically verify mm -hmm. that this was written by Paul, you'd accept it into the canon, we would accept it as having apostolic authority and it would be considered scripture. I agree, okay. So, the point I'm trying to make is. But well, that's more uh, commensurate uh, with the author. No, what I'm saying is, so our, our understanding of the New Testament, we, we are making an historical um, anal analysis okay. of these documents. Do they have apostolic authority? Uh -huh. If they do, then we consider it a scripture. Right. Okay. Cool. And so, but what I'm saying is, so what, how you get the Bible. So my point is this. Sorry. We, you do not have to be inspired to verify this manuscript that we find in Corinth was written by Paul. You just have to be a good historian. Do you understand my position? Mm -hmm. So just because the church were good historians, it doesn't mean that they no, were inspired. Because the problem is, right? Do you understand my position? I do and I don't, because the problem okay. is this, right? The early church weren't just a bunch of historians. So how did they verify the text? What do you mean? How did they how, how did the early church know which text to receive and which ones to throw up? Because okay. many gospels circulated. So yeah, of course. How did they know to only accept okay, those? Okay, so what we see, in the early church so it's not in the gospels it doesn't tell you which gospels to accept okay one second so what, is it tradition okay what we see in the early church writings are only four gospels initially it's only when you get to like uh after like the, the second century third century no but i'm, I'm not asking also, how you look back and do it i'm asking how did those in the first century know which ones to receive okay. and what so when papias says mark and matthew wrote the gospels he doesn't tell us how he came to the understanding he just he just He's says witness, though, mark right? and yeah exactly so right so then to verify the scripture what must we have 
Yeah. Do you agree with the 27 canons? The 20 yeah. Okay, so that's fine then. Remember, canonicity and orthodoxy is a wider thing. Okay. It's not a closed thing. So can we not just concentrate on what the scripture says? Well, the thing is, once again, it's your epistemology here. I accept scripture as an authority. Okay. I also accept the church as an authority. Okay. And the Holy Father no problem. Say. So go to the scripture and you can even give me your church father's is, interpretation of is, the scripture. The thing is, that's cool. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So I'm trying to say that, okay, look. When we see, okay, for example, when we see the operation of believing in God, the, the thing that God does to, to make you believe, right? Okay? Now, no one believes in the Father except through the Son, no one knows the Father except through the Son, right? And to whom the Son chooses to reveal. Right, so the Son and the Father mutually have this one action, this one operation, okay? It's not two actions, it's the one action of being saved, okay? But how do you, how do you get saved? By confessing Christ as Lord. And you can't confess Christ as Lord except by who? Except by the Holy Spirit. So we see all three persons mutually working in this one action to bring you to God. And so we see the unity of the operation. If you have a unity of your action, you have a unity of nature. Okay, brother. That Holy Spirit, where does it come from? The Father. Okay. So did Jesus have that spirit when uh, yes. he walked? No, he didn't. Did. Only up, up to after the baptism of John. I thought he walked on water. No, after the baptism of John, yeah, that's when. The Holy Spirit. Yeah, so prior to that, he didn't have the, the Holy Spirit, did he? In his humanity, yeah. Hold on one second. Prior to the in baptism. His humanity, one second, yes. I'm asking. Prior to the baptism of John, did he have the Holy Spirit? Once again, in his humanity, no. In his humanity, no. So he didn't have the Spirit of Jehovah on him? Once again, you're a No, no, I'm asking you. Seriously, yeah, yeah. I want to I'm understand. I'm not. Me while I'm yeah, on sorry, again. Okay, okay, sorry, right, yeah. Yeah. Listen. So I'm saying to you, do you, want, do you know our doctrine of, of Chalcedon and the Christology, two, have, two I, natures I, I, in one person? I'm just asking you a simple question. Yeah, I'm answering you with the way I believe. Okay, so just ask me how you believe. I don't like this appeal to simplicity, I find it dishonest. If I have a genuine answer, take it for the intellectualness that I'm giving it to. Okay, go on. It down, but that's not yeah, fair. Go. So, right, okay, look, very simple. We have a doctrine called there are two natures united in one person of Christ. There's one person acts and rules and does in two natures. He died in his human nature, he did miracles for his divine nature. These are united in the person, there's a communication of names, that's why we can say God died, God died qua his humanity, the natures are united, not separable. So for us there are things that are true of Christ qua his humanity, things that are true of Christ qua his divinity. That's just simply our doctrine, it's always been our doctrine. There's no contradiction between Christ and human things or not having something as a human because he has all those things as God. As we see Paul say, the spirit is the spirit of who? The spirit of Christ. Okay, so now, there was a time the spirit, the spirit of the Most High God came upon him. Yes. Okay. So Jesus didn't have that spirit prior. Prior to his humanity. Okay. But he had it prior to his divinity. No, he didn't. Says who? Where are you getting that from? The spirit is the spirit of who? After the, that's the spirit, like the spirit <laughs> of Elijah. One second. Is the spirit of Elijah belong to Elijah? That's a divine energy though, that's different. We're talking about the Holy Spirit, we're talking about a divine energy. That's the, just, the, Jesus said, the spirit who, no, no, who should, two different one times. second, the spirit who the Father will send in my name. So let me explain no, something to you. He doesn't just say send. He, let let he, me he, explain he says, something. Wait, hold on. He says something very important after that. He says, Patros ek parumanon, that he proceeds from the Father. Now let me ask you, when you came forth from your mother, you proceeded from her, right? You were begotten by her, right? Okay. okay. Now do you share her nature? Are you human because she is human? Yes. Okay. Are you a person because she's a person? Okay, yeah, I'm a person. Okay, so when the Holy Spirit proceeds forth, where you come forth from, you are not. Okay. You come forth. But if you proceed forth, you share a nature, because okay. he has the divine nature, therefore the Holy Spirit does. And the Father is a person, so therefore the Holy Spirit is a person. And Christ sends him. And to send someone who has the divine nature, you must have the divine nature. And that shows in three of them, unity and economy, the movement towards creatures for salvation. This is oh. what the point is. That's why you need to read St. Gregory on the Holy Trinity. I'm not through God, so you actually understand the art. Brother, listen to the question. Answer it. Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, yes? Have I answered you? One second, no, you haven't, no. So did Jesus, no, one second, one second, one second. Did Jesus, did Jesus, did Jesus have the Holy Spirit prior to the baptism of John? What his humanity no. It says he received it after the baptism that's of John. What that's what the humanity. that's what the scripture teaches. Yeah, the human person, no, it doesn't. It doesn't say the human person. It says that, the person. Now you're begging perspicuity, right? So the problem is with that text. Don't just mean what they're saying. Say they have to be interpreted properly. Okay. So when it says that Jesus received the Spirit after the baptism of John, you're reinterpreting it as that. Why is it a reinterpretation? How do you understand the actual interpretation? Okay. So what? How do you understand that? Because I have well the whole early church that were learnt from the doctrines of the apostles to teach me how to interpret the text. Okay. And so we see Saint Ignatius, we see Saint Dionysius was soon of Saint Paul, he wrote about the Trinity, okay. by the way. So someone like Clement of Alexandria, he believed Jesus was created. Do you where agree with him? Where do you say that? 
Okay, do you want me to prove it to you? Yeah, show me, show me. Okay, show me. And I want it in the uh, Greek, please. In the Greek? Yeah, yeah. I don't have it in the Greek. <laughs> I need it because the words are very important here. Very, very important. Greek has... Okay, so I haven't, I haven't got it in the Greek, so... Okay. So well, that's, so what I need to know the word he used. That's what's most important. Okay. Well, I'll so give, give me the, I'll give, give you the English translation. You give it to, and I'll look it at myself. I'll look at the Greek. But even so, there are church fathers who made mistakes. That's true. Yeah. So what I'm saying is, oh. appealing, appealing to church fathers is not going to help I'm you. Appealing to church fathers. That's what you're I doing. The apostolic fathers. I'm talking about the fathers okay. who so learned how, from the apostles. How do you d discern which ones are apostolic, apostolic and which ones aren't? Those that are direct students of the apostles. Okay. So it's Clement of Alexandria. No, St. Ignatius, St. Polycarp, St. Dionysius, yes. Okay, so, so where does uh, Saint, uh, Saint Clement of Alexandria, where does he come into? I think Clement of Alexandria in the 3rd century, about the 200, somewhere I remember. Yeah. He's in Egypt. He's, He's the first witness that Paul wrote the book of Hebrews, in Hebrews, and it was translated into Greek. That's the first uh, witness of... Oh. Yes, it is. Okay, show me somewhere so, earlier. So, actually, when you read recent scholarship, you're going to find out that the reason actually is, is because um, Hebrews were circulated with the letters of Paul. So the epistles went around as 14 and Hebrews was the second in that collection. And that's why it was attributed to Paul, but other people said no. No, what I'm saying, he's the earliest witness. I'm the earliest witness, but I'm saying that we have, it goes back earlier than that. No, okay, show me that. Where are you getting that from? From, I can't think of the paper I read off the top of my head. No, you, it's you, not academia. You no, do. it's not there, brother. I mean, are you saying I'm lying? Well, you, you're probably you're mistaken. No, no. I read the paper. It's all there. Sorry, I don't have academic. Okay. I'm telling you. I'm ca telling you definitively. I'm saying definitively. He's the earliest witness. I don't think so. It's the Saint Justin Martyr. No, here. Justin Martyr doesn't talk about the Book of Hebrews. He talks about the Book of Hebrews. He talks about the Gospels. Yeah, I know he does. Yeah. Can you show me the clip? Well, no, no, which one do you want to show? That he. Okay, let me yeah, even. I want, I want to see the one about the Book of Hebrews. That he's the first witness. I want to. See, no, I just want to see the quote. Let me even just show you that he what he believed anyway. Let me just get you a quick. Right. Is this for, for your channel? No, it's not my channel. No. It is. Hello. God bless you. Is this for your channel? Uh, is this for your YouTube channel? Yeah. What's your channel name? Uh, Trinity Buster. Oh, you're here to the bump my Trinity. Okay. Yeah, Do you think he's doing well? But why are you saying it's your Trinity? My <laughs> Trinity is the Trinity taught by the church for 2,000 years. So, so does God have a Trinity? God is the Trinity. Okay. But did he teach it? Yeah. We just went through that, John 15, 26, and I explained how the unity of operation points to a unity of nature. And God taught that? Of course. John 15, 26, six. What does it mean to proceed from something, to come out of, which means you're not that, but when you come out of, you share a nature Do you know the Bible teaches all things comes out of the Father, all things. I agree, that's monarchy. I'm just saying all things, all of creation yes. comes out of the Father. Yeah, yes. like so that, does that mean everything that comes out of the Father is the no, same because nature? The There's something that the, Father, the Son and the Spirit come by nature, creation comes by will. And that's what St. Athanasius actually talks about. Wait, yo, 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 yo. What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Come on, man! Go back! Go back!